Hello friends and welcome to another video. Um, in this video I want to talk about my new power amp. You see here the experimental uh, setup in my H frame that I always used to experiment with these. Um, I've now had it for two weeks. I'm very pleased with it. And uh, I also got some questions on um, my previous post uh, when I said I uh, just built this. And um, so I will answer those in my question. I will also go roughly through the design and some of the ideas behind it, answer the questions, and then I'll also tell you about how it sounds and um, some of the, um, the remarkable facets that I, I discovered with this. And, um, and of course, you know, this looks a bit rough, but eventually once I'm completely happy with the design, I'll package it nicely up like this headphone amp here. And then we've got Millie, she wants to come inside. Come in, Mill. So, now, so, um, yes, my 47 amp fire. Let's get into this. So, Jurgen Mann asked me, like, where did your inspiration, where does this design uh, be driven from? Uh, I'm, I'm really paraphrasing here. Sorry, I, I couldn't remember your exact question, but that was the gist of it. So, and uh, MFR58 um, asked, uh, can you tell me a bit more about it? I'm interested to hear more about this amp. And... Um, and then I'll scroll. Anton, he, he deleted his comment afterwards, but he asked, did you ever compare it to, to uh, trios versus pentode mode? So where does this amp came from? I'll explain that first. So my desire was always to work with a first gen amp. Now, I also always like simplicity, but the first gen, I wanted always to do a classic amp. So use tube rectifiers, use chokes. Um, do classic power set, everything just pure classic um, setup and use one of the earlier directly heated triodes. However, this of course is used in pentodes uh, mode and, um, and how I came to it is because Lynn Olson, who um, uses the same type of circuit I've been using unwittingly, um, because I, I came across it by accident almost, uh, I did it five, six years ago, I designed a differential amp, and um, that's very much in the same style as Lynn Olson. But he mentioned that his, his, his friend, um, Gary Pym, that he had built a 47, uh, Type 47 push-pull amp in pentode mode, and it almost sounded like a, a Type 45 amp in push-pull mode. So that sort of raised the question. And then I had a look at this, and, and of course this tube is uh, has enough power it is also one of those earliest gens so it ticked that box for me that it, it was you know this is from 1937 this this tube design and then i looked at the load lines and if you have a look at this they're surprisingly evenly spaced for a pentode these very usable and, and and especially when you then go into differential mode where if you have any little bit of a linear rarity from here to compare to there, um, it will largely compensate when you move this into the differential mode setup. So very usable. And um, if you look then at the power, um, this sort of is 2.1 to 3.1 watts per tube. So you, you, you're you basically then talking 4.2 to 6.2 uh, watts possible with um, this type of amp, this tube. And uh, I've got 100 dB efficient speakers, so um, more than uh, sufficient. I actually um, not using the full signal. Um, my really, I mean, I'm only using a, a small part, a very linear part, usually with most playing of the music. So uh, in and out, there you go. So. This tube was very, um, this allowed me to actually stay with a single stage. And as I know from a headphone amp, sim this simplicity pays off in, in, in a way, if you can get away with it. And it pays off in because the power supply gets simpler. You don't have to have several voltages. You don't have to look at the direct connect or interstage transformers or a capacitor that is of sufficient quality because really with a level that is possible here, if you would use a two-stage design, you would have to have a very high quality um, um, coupling capacitor, like something like maybe a MyFlex or something of $115 or so. Like you, you, you need something like, like that in here because else 
you're just throwing away the quality. I can tell you that this has so much potential that um, you'll be throwing it very away. And I'm probably doing it still with my output transformer. Um, right now. Um, so this particular tube made it possible for me to actually go into pento mode and do a full setup, classic setup in the power supply. So I'll go through that now. So what the basic design was, I, I use a hybrid bridge because I didn't have the right type of um, transformer. So I had to use a, a bridge and this makes the EZ81. Um, I'm using as a rectifier and um, that is, um, and then I use two Scotty diodes for the other part of the bridge. And of course at the other end, uh, near the ground, I'm also using this as a as a, a common cathode bias, which is a, another rectifier tube. So this is the 6BW4, and um, I'm using that on the other end. So the whole circuit where the tube sits in is actually not galvanically connected to, to any of the power supply um, in, as such. Um, so. Now to see the, the the filtering is done like this. So I, uh, after it comes through the rectifier, uh, there's a small cap here, um, two UF at the moment, and um, then a 40 Henry choke, which is quite high impedance, so 275 ohms. So this um, removes the bulk of the filtering to ripple to a minimum. But I've, I've decided on an extra one. So this is a 27 ohm uh, four Henry choke, uh, 400 milliamps capacity. Um, as a second choke and in between sits this main filtering capacitance which is um, 440 UF. Um, so this really does all the ripple filtering and this is more uh, meant as a power source, as a uh, current source. And then on top of that I've got um, this capacitor, so this is an MKP capacitor, um, 333 uh, UF. And that is a direct path, so it connects between the the, the bias and um, and this and this and this um, uses this um, provides a return path for any of the differences that occur between these two tubes in differential mode. Now the tubes that I'm using so um, are the Rations. So I think uh, back then they were making fridges and um, vacuum tubes, but now they changed their business model. I think. Um, so yeah, full classic setup, unbelievably quiet. So I'm using an AC fi filament heater. So here you have, this is actually a beautiful transformer, filament transformer that I've been waiting on. And as soon as it arrived, I made this amp. Um, so that's a two and a half volt filament. I'm using AC um, thing and it, um, this amp is completely, I, I put this in uh, a, um, a home, home pot. But it really wasn't necessary. It was so symmetric for some reason. It, it, it's so quiet. Maybe this tube was actually also completely made for AC uh, heater, um, but um, it's specced as DC or AC. Uh, but it's 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 uh, only when I put my ear to the to the co the cones of the loudspeaker I can actually hear it. So, given the efficiency level of my uh, speaker, uh, that, that uh, the hum level is really really low. Um. Now, what does that sound like? Um, so, a couple of standout things. First of all, I felt that I gained in the lowest octaves, the sub bass, I, I gained heft. So it seems that the bass is more filled out. So this was immediately noticeable to me. The other thing is in and maybe it's because I don't have an interstate transformer. It's a bit speculation at this point, but I felt that now everything, when you have a, a, a flow and a rhythm in the music, uh, uh, you know, the, the invisible spirit that animates the whole music, all the instruments, all the artists, I now felt that the lowest tones and the highest tones now are all connected. They all sing from the same song sheet. That coherence between lower and high really is prominent the, the the timing is just superb um yeah that that is a standout feature now the other thing is the subtlety and i can't call it detail um it's just a nuance in the music so the the what these tubes are 
and now this amp together with my speaker is it's unbelievably revealing of the source and what i mean is that i now had records that just where i can just hear that the groove has been worn um when i um, compare my cd players I, you know there's the digital fa facet that you can always hear and then but you can also hear certain flatness in the sound like if i uh, actually my analog sources progress the most so my best records just propelled forwards in quality uh, with this amp so if the source is good it was well recorded the the, the vinyl is in good state ah oh, i mean the amount of nuance uh, is just staggering it jumped like i, I just felt like I'm, I, I'm my amp even though my previous amp was a two-stage fully directly heated amp i still feel, feel that and this actually uses the same output transformer it's a landau um however i felt that I, i'm having a three four times more expensive amp it, it, it is so much it is a whole not a whole class it's like two classes improved in quality in, in 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 some ways you really feel that the other thing is quietness and, and it, this comes out in two factors quietness so one is the amp is quiet but the music that it produces is very quiet so it feels like it is just uh, there's just no fatigue at all and there's also no confusion in the sound there's no probably no intermodulation distortion or so it is it is, it is it just presents everything very understated but everything is there and it's coherent and and that and that silence is there but the other thing it does is i can just turn the volume down and i can still hear everything like the, the and that is something really new that i hadn't experienced that that when i, I full, put the volume down and i actually using a low quality for a pot pot there it's just an alps um and not in my previous amp, I actually had a shunt regulate a shunt uh, volume control, much higher quality. But despite that, um, the, I can just turn the music down, and it still sound it doesn't collapse. Um, and, oh yeah, and with the bass, it it you know even when I was in the garden outside, I still could hear the bass, and it came through. The the lowness was still there, you know, despite not having a pressure effect. So um yeah so very promising very very good um i still because i needed to use a step up i'm still got some concern i, I still want to experiment with that uh, i'd also love but my budget doesn't stretch it to me um i'd love to t to actually put a hashimoto output transformer on this and then and, and and you know give you the results of how, what that makes what what kind of difference um but the conclusion so far is this is an immensely enjoyable amp um, the single stage design works well um, the, the pen tote works surprisingly well uh, um, it sounds fabulous it, it again it sounds like a differential amp which is not single it doesn't sound quite so, sound single-ended but it certainly doesn't sound like push-pull it, it, it is far more weighted towards single-ended the, the differential type of design um, to me also this classic power setup is a, is a definitely the keeper uh, over my regulated design um, and I can't wait to really upgrade it. Now some other details, yes, um, I used copper single strand wiring uh, mostly for the power and all everywhere where there's a low voltage signal, um, that's all um, silver plated copper uh, also single stranded. Um, so. That's it about the amp. If you have any remaining questions, let me know. Um, and um, I might follow this up at some some other st stage um, when uh, when if something changes. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed it for a video. I hope you found it interesting. And um, yeah, there's plenty of more projects to come, including cables and decks. So um, and, and my conclusions from comparing all these decks, uh, but that aside you'll you'll when that's ready um i'll post a video with it tomorrow i'll probably post a sound clip so you can listen to this and maybe compare it from from earlier posted sound clips so you have some reference and maybe you know i don't know how much it will translate but it at least will give you a um, a sense of how this thing how this amp sounds in my room um which is you know the only thing that matters how does it actually sound in the room 
so you can have a listen to that and then i'll hope to make some new videos as well um thank you for watching thank you for listening and um have a brilliant day and i hope to catch you in the next video bye bye